That is 937. You certainly have more online shopping options than ever before for this holiday season. So we here at Fox 61 just want to make sure that you and your information are safe while you're doing it. I'm happy to have on the show Dr. Frank Breidinger for, uh, from the University of New Haven uh, joining me now. And get this, he runs the Cyber Forensics Research and Education Group there. Uh, that sounds so fast. First of all, a pleasure to meet you. It Thanks sounds like uh, the group, uh, what, what you guys do might be the, the basis for about two or three different television shows that run on prime time here in the U.S. Uh, can you just start by telling us what is it that you guys do in cyber forensics? So we pretty much try to analyze whatever we can get our hands on. So we did research on smartphones, on drones, on we are now getting into self-driving cars. So whatever we can get our hands on and try to analyze what information is stored in these devices. Mm -hmm. um, this is what um, my colleague, myself, and my, my students uh, work on. And, and when you're looking for information, what are you trying to glean? The, the levels of security, uh, ways to hack into them? What are you looking for? I mean, usually you have to hack into them first to overcome their security. And then you try to learn from what is stored on a device. So let's assume you you find a drone somewhere and um, so where was this drone flown to um, what was done with this drone what connected devices um, happened sure. who's the owner of the drone and so on and there's a lot of information you can actually find on drones <laughs> I, I'm good yeah and you would probably wouldn't think that uh, is it safe to assume uh, just uh, from an average person like myself that we have no idea the level of identifying information there are on phones on tablets that can help you guys out if you need to find out something about us oh yeah my my uh, colleague did recently a study and uh, he could get the whole life of an individual based on a smartphone, including credit card number, social security number, and so on. So, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually starting to get a little dystopian and scary. So, um, uh, uh, about shopping, uh, it, are smartphones probably the worst way to go about it digitally? Um, smartphones are a convenient way to shop, but we have to be careful because they usually have less protection. Um, yes. We have usually virus scanners, um, and so on installed on our computers, but we do not have this, this this software usually on our smartphones. So therefore, it makes it like a little bit easier for for um, attackers to take over a smartphone. Okay, and you know what? Before we uh, run out of time, I do want to. You were happy to share some tips with us for for cyber shopping. We want to put some of those up. Uh, the first one it says there, doctor, is, is trust your gut. What what do we mean by that? I mean, if you. See Let's talk about the real world. If you see a store that you wouldn't walk into because it looks sketchy already from the outside, um, and that's the same in the cyber world. I mean, mm -hmm. if there's a store that looks, the website looks weird and you don't have a good feeling shopping there and they ask you too much information, for example, no shopping if it's your birthday or your social security number online if you want to purchase a, a deodorant or a perfume. So you probably should leave this website. Sure. Uh, email. Uh, you get solicited offers. The idea is to not just click on the link you want to go and, and, and check it out for yourself. I mean, yourself. email is the most common way to trick you. If there's a, and this um, amazing offer and you click on this link, this is usually how they try to trick you. Um, my, mm -hmm. my tip is to go to this particular website, um, try to find the offer there, and then you know it's a, a valid uh, uh, valid offer. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, as far as using credit cards, is there anything you can uh, help us out with that? Um, banks get more and more into virtual credit cards, so you can get like a virtual credit card that is good for one purchase or a particular time frame. This okay. is definitely an option for the holidays. Um, alternatively, I would recommend if you don't, um, if, if your bank doesn't offer that, at least use only a single credit card. So in case you get breached, it's only one credit card you mm -hmm. have to deal with and you can still use the rest. That's interesting. I don't know that I'd ever heard of virtual credit cards. So at least we took something away. Uh, those are just a couple of great ideas coming from the uh, Cyber Forensics Lab. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here on Fox 61.